First one's gone cold. Come on, drink this. Why did I have to wake up? Because it's time to. Oh, why can't I just die? Look, look just drink this, will you? Grenda's never going to speak to me again after last night. He was furious. They all were. Well, I did try and tell you it wasn't a very good idea. Well, why would Rodney make it up? He wouldn't. You got the wrong end of the stick like they told you. Jack was history. Oh, I can't believe Grandad knew about it. He never mentioned it. It was between them. Oh, I feel so stupid. Well, you're not with the most tactful people lately, have you? The old pub heard Marlon. Hmm. We'll have to bet you know this. Maybe it'll teach you not to go charging in in future. I mean, what did she think she was doing, bursting through to the back room like that? It does all sound rather dramatic. She's gone from bad to worse, is that little madam? Still can't quite believe it's the same person who stood by me through so much. Try to be charitable, please. Charity, Ashley, it begins at home. So if it's taking sides we're talking, I'm firmly on my mum's. Morning. Morning. Oh, hello. Not sat in anyone's special chair, are you? No, 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 no. Sit where you like. Is it a mm, Just boiled. We didn't wait, you did we? No, no, why would you? Let's leave Nicola and Carlos to breakfast together. Um, we can have ours in the living room. No, you don't need to give us any special treatment. It's your house after all. Morning. Morning. Are you all right? Well, I have had better starts to my day. I think we did the right thing, facing the music there and then. It's all nonsense anyway. Yes, it may well be, but that doesn't make me feel any better about the outcome. How dare Rodney discuss such personal things with Trisha? I object to having my love life the subject of barroom banter. Well, likewise. Between my ex-husband and your granddaughter, we've been made a laughing stock. Well, it was all Rodney's doing. Trisha was just the messenger. Just the messenger? Did you hear the way she was laying into me? Heaven knows what yarn Rodney spun her. He was making quips yesterday in the restaurant. So you've told Rodney about you and Jack, have you? No, of course I haven't. I don't tell him anything. It's all in the past anyway. Have you taken breakfast? No, I haven't got time. I want to pop into Hotton before we open. Do a bit of retail therapy. Want some more coffee, darling? Nicola, don't you think you ought to start getting ready for work? You are opening up this morning, after all. It's ten past nine. Yes, well, we all know how long you take in the bathroom. Actually, I should be making a move. Right. Just go and get ready, love. Ready when you are. <laughs> so, what have you said to give Trisha the impression that Mum's a cheat? I was just joking, that's all. And I didn't say she was still seeing Jack, just that it's nice to see that she's finally made her mind up between the two of them. And how do you know she ever was seeing Jack? Oh, come off it, Bernice. You must have seen the way she looks at him whenever he's in the pub. I picked up on it straight away. Oh, so you based your assumption on nothing more than looks and stares? You forget, love. <laughs> I know your mother. <laughs> the woman's now but a strumpet. It wouldn't surprise me if she didn't have an entire football team on the go. But Jack Sagden, of all people. Mind you, at her age, you can hardly afford to be picky. <laughs> all that nonsense about it being in the past. She's been off gallivanting with Alan Turner for a year or more, to my certain knowledge. So don't go telling me that Jack Sugden was seeing her before that wife of his absconded. Well, of course she's been two-timing them. It makes sense. I often saw her chatting Jack up across the bar. Well, many's the time I've seen her wig and his flat cap far too close for casual conversation. You know what that makes Alan Turner, don't you? What? A cuckold. When you quite finish, Mrs Birch, I'd just like to pay for my paper, please. You could have piped up. There you are. What are you doing out here? I'm having a break and a think. Oh, Mum, people will forget about it soon. There's someone else to gossip about. Alan's furious. He doesn't like being gossiped about any more than I do. I could murder your father. Yeah, well, I've had a talk with him, and he reckons it was just an idle comment, no malice involved. 
Well, he would, wouldn't he, trying to wriggle out of it? It's all par for the course with him. Well, look, I'm not trying to excuse him, but Trisha's the one that blew it all out of proportion and let everybody know. Well, I suppose. She's been getting really out of order lately. I have a good mind to have it out with her once and for all. Oh, I don't think that would do any good, Pet. Yeah, well, it would make me feel a whole lot better. How did we come to this? Well, I shouldn't worry about it. You've got Nicola now. She's not going to let you down. No. Mum, I was wondering, you know, since Nicola came to stay and Dad... I know only too well. Yeah, well, what with them both staying at the vicarage, things have been getting pretty crowded. I mean, it's not as big as all that, and me and Ash could do with a bit of space. Well, you want to tell your father to find somewhere else to go, preferably abroad. Well, actually, I was thinking there might be another solution. Since Trisha left and I got married, there's only you and Alan living upstairs. And what with Nicola working behind the bar now, it makes sense, really. You want Nicola to move in above the pub? Well, if it'd be all right with you. Rodney's daughter living here with me. Well, you two get on all right now, don't you? Well, I suppose, but we're not exactly what you call close. Oh, Mum, it's really help us out. Well, all right then, why not? Like you say, we've got the room. Oh, thanks, Mum. It's just what I need. I certainly didn't expect to see you in here again. I know. I thought I'd better come and see you after last night. Did you indeed? To try and apologise. I think it's a bit late for that. The harm's been well and truly done. Well, I didn't know you knew about it, Grandad. I mean, why'd you put up with her if she's been off seeing Jack? What goes on between Diane and I is none of your business or anybody else's. I'm just trying to stick up for you, Grandad. You shouldn't be treated like that. Trisha, for the last time, this is none of your business. And when will you learn to keep quiet about things that don't concern you? In the last few days, Betty's lost her job and Diane and I have been humiliated in front of the entire village. You haven't, Grandad. It's that cow and Jack they'll have it in for. That's meant to make me feel better, is it? I thought you changed. I really did. When you first came to stay with me, I put down your tactlessness and your mischief-making to youth and immaturity. But it seems that experience has taught you nothing. You cannot go through life upsetting everyone who crosses your path. I was just trying to help you, Grandad. What, by storming in here and screaming at Diane? If you were concerned for me, we could have had a quiet chat in private. Well, they're trying to make fools out of us. Who? Bernice and Diane. They're about to ridicule us both. Oh, for heaven's sake, have you gone completely mad? We've got to stick together, Grandad. No, that's where you're wrong. And before you start feeling sorry for yourself, you're not entirely at fault here. Rodney had no right to tell you what he did. Well, I don't see you having a go at him. I wouldn't waste my breath. No. You save all your anger for your granddaughter. After all, what does family mean? Family? It obviously means a great deal more to me than it does to you. Oh, yeah? Well, that's rich. You haven't even spoken to me mum since I came to stay. This has got nothing to do with that. I'm tired of this, Trisha. I'm tired of all of it. And so's everyone else in this village. What's she doing here? I'll keep out of it, you. It's between me and my granddad. I've said all I'm going to say. Go on, get out. Are you going to let her speak to me like that? Thought you might have been at the wall pack last night. Why? Well, you're not hiding away these days, are you? Still, just as well you weren't there, really. Oh, yeah? Why's that, then? You missed a right, Barney. Trisha was screaming blue murder at Diane Blackstock. Well, I'm glad it's not me in the firing line for once. Mm, quite. And it's about time Jack got his fair share of the blame. Sorry? Well, it turns out Diane was having it off with him. <laughs> Jack and Diane? Mm. That doesn't seem very likely to me. Apparently behind everybody's backs, including Alan Turner. When you say she was seeing him, how long are we talking? Well, there's no saying, really, is there? But by all accounts, Jack wasn't as lonely as he was claiming when you and Sarah, God rest her soul, were shacked up in that cottage. Do you want a bag for that lot? I thought I'd better pay you a visit. Really? Well, it's a shame thought doesn't play a more regular role in your life, Rodney. I wanted to apologise for yesterday. I don't know how it all got so blown out of proportion. Blown out of... It was you it all came from! Telling Trisha who knows what. 
and giving Alan the impression that I tell you my business. Hang on, I didn't even talk to Alan. I'm not saying that, but Trisha's little tirade made it look to him like you're in the know. All I said was... Yes, come on, Rodney, what exactly did you say? I'd love to hear what little seeds of poison you planted in that girl's head. Will you let me speak? If I had my way, you'd never speak again cos I'd cut your tongue out. I simply said it was nice to see you'd made up your mind between Alan and Jack. I didn't think it would cause any upset. And you expect me to believe that? OK, OK, I may have said something about the old days, but well, that's hardly got anything to do with the way you behave in your twilight years, is it? Me what? You're not 30 anymore, Diane. Oh, and you are. Strutting around, giving it all the smooth talk, and you're that close to drawing your pension. I've worn better than you. So, come on, then. What was it you said about the old days? I simply said that even if you were seeing Alan and Jack at the same time, it's uh, nothing compared to what you used to be like. Meaning? Oh, come on, Diane. You had more men on the go than Fiona Richmond. And if I did, were you any different? Trying it on with every buxom blonde that came within spitting distance. If you'd been more of a husband oh, and a father, yeah. Oh, yeah. don't you think I'd have had less cause? Why is it, why is it that whatever happens, you always have to drag up the past? It's you that's dragging it up. It's you that's been mouthing off to Trisha and who knows how many others. Why can't you just get lost, Rodney? Yes, you've been reunited with Bernice. Yes, your precious Nicola's made herself very much at home and we've all come to terms with that. But you... What reason have you to hang around? You're not wanted! I think my daughters might disagree with you there, Diane. After all, I am father to both of them. You, on the other hand, only mother to one of them. If anyone's got less of a reason to hang around, I'd say it's you. My daughter is going to have a baby. Yes, and she's my daughter too! By God! I wish she wasn't. Thank you. Thank you. And it turned to hot and first thing. Well, good for you. Shopping beats counselling any day of the week. Well, not that you do. Quite. I bought you and Ashley these. I saw them and I couldn't resist. Oh, Mum, you didn't have to do that. I know, but I thought, well, you know. <laughs> oh, they're absolutely beautiful. <laughs> oh, I'm getting so excited. We're off for the scan tomorrow. Oh, I can't wait to see the picture. Oh, there's naught more sickening than the sight of over-affectionate mothers and daughters. Was it just a son you had there, Mrs Birch? Do I ask you about your particulars? Oh, I should hope not. <laughs> <laughs> had that friend of yours boasting in my ear half this morning. Sorry? The one that's taken over the B&B, Peroxide Polly. I think she means Carol. Oh, I'm glad I'll not be making use of it. She's got about as much taste as a water biscuit. What sort of thing is she planning on? Well, modern art, for starters. The last thing you want when you're off for a good night's sleep is the sight of a cow's innards hanging in a tank. Modern art? She's as pretentious as ever, then. Now, come on, Viv. You were the best of friends once, remember? Carol and I are history, and don't you forget it, Bob. Neither of us are speaking with either of them. I've got a proposition to put to you. Oh, yeah? Yes. You must be sick of calling the vicarage your home. I mean, it's not exactly the most relaxed of dwellings, after all. So, I've had a word with my mum, and she says you can move in here as soon as you like. What do you say? Are you that desperate to get rid of me? No, not at all. I just thought you could do with a bit of extra space. Mm -hmm. But I like it where I am. Yeah, I know, but, well, it's not exactly as though you're sleeping alone, is it, Nick? And it is a vicarage. Yeah, I suppose it is. Are you sure, Diane said it'd be OK? Ask her yourself. In that case, I'll get packing as soon as I can. You've got a nerve. Oh, look. Round two. Richie? All the time Jack was accusing me of taking Sarah away, and it turns out you and him were at it. You hypocrites, the pair of you. Richie, it isn't true. It wasn't like that. Oh, yeah? So you're denying that anything went on between you, then? I'm not saying another word on the subject. It's not to do with anyone. That's where you're wrong, Diane. It's got a lot to do with me. Cos it was me and Sarah that got all the stick and all along Jack was having his own little affair. That's not true! And how come everybody's talking about it, eh? You know what? You make me sick.
And I haven't. Look, why don't the pair of you take the afternoon off? I can manage. You wouldn't mind. Alan! What next? You've dealt with worse, Mum, as you and I both know. I'm not as young as I was. Maybe, but you're just as feisty. But you're right. Things need sorting. It's about time Trisha was firmly dealt with. So I'll be living even closer. Great. I know Bernice was a bit stroppy this morning, but it's only because they've got a few hours. Do you think we've upset them? No, of course not. How good we are. No, it's just we're living in a vicarage and that. Would it bother you, living above where you work? No. I'm not bothered about living with two old fogies. <laughs> but I think Bernice and Ashley need some space. Is everything all right between them? Oh, yeah, of course it is. But imagine if you'd just got word and suddenly there's all these people moving in with you. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose you're right. You know, if someone had told me a year ago that I'd end up living in a pub in some small country village, I'd have told them they were barking. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. You miss the city, do you? Mm, I don't know about the city. I prefer to be abroad, really. Somewhere a bit more adventurous. Mm. Well, you can hardly compare the French Alps or some Spanish islands with the outskirts of Harrogate and Lees, can oh, you? Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do you want? Have you any idea how much upset you've caused? Oh, look, just turn around and get out, will ya? I'm not going anywhere until I've said what I've got to say. You've ruined things between my mum and Alan. It's got nothing to do with you. Oh, yes, it has. It's my pub and I have to work alongside the pair of them. Not to mention deal with all the gossip around the bar. Hey, hey, what's going on here? She's having a go at me, Marlon. Too right I am. Luke, Luke, I'm not getting involved, but if you two want to talk, then go upstairs and do it before you frighten our customers away. Fine by me. After you, Tricia. So, uh, how are you fixed for the run tomorrow morning, then? Oh, no way, mate. I can hardly walk today. I'm afraid Bernice and I are due at the hospital. You're dropping like flies. Hey, Carlos, how are you fixed for a couple of miles tomorrow morning? Yeah, why not? Right, I'll get him in. Oh, well, same as usual for me, please, Sean. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? All of us housemates out for a drink together. Where's Bernice? Um, pop to the shop, I think. Oh, right. If all you're going to do is tell me I was out of order, then you can save your breath, because it's all I seem to hear these days, and I might have just got the message. Yeah, well, maybe it'll teach you to start thinking about the way you behave towards people. And how about the way everybody else behaves, eh? Like who? Like you, towards me. Uh, Trisha, I don't really want to go dragging out all our past history, but I think it's fair to say it's you who's caused the rifts, both when we first met and more recently. Well, you couldn't have cared less what might have happened to me after Joe did a runner. That's not true. And anyway, it was you who resigned. And your mum's no different. OK, she might not be seeing Jack anymore, but she was. She's made a laughing stock of me, Grandad. If you're trying to say that my family's on some kind of evil mission to do you and yours down, then you're even thicker between the ears than I thought you were. Oh, that's it. Just throw the insults. Just about your level. My level? My level? Can I remind you who it is that's been calling me every name under the sun round this village? And can I ask who Edna and Viv are constantly quoting to my face in the shop, bar and the church? Well, you've been stagging me off too. I wouldn't be lying myself. You're a liar! Oh, really? You've never been loyal to me. Oh, I see. So all that time we were friends, I was just putting on an act, was I? Everything you do is an act, Bernice. Can I get you another pint, sir? Oh, what lovely weather we're having. The only thing false, sir, is your smile. We have all been extremely loyal to you. When you agreed to marry Joe, did any of us go to the authorities to shop you? No. And why do you think that was? Because we went round begging people. Because most people aren't that vindictive despite the fact that both Alan and Marlon were extremely hurt by what you did. Well, that's between me and them, so keep your opinions out. Yes, exactly. Like what goes on between my mum and Alan is their business. You interfering little cow. So you don't think my granddad should be bothered about your mum having it off with someone else? Well, choke on this then, Bernice. Got it all, Thomas. When your Gavin first showed up, me and him got it together. Still not that important, is it? After all, Diane's affair with Jack shouldn't upset me granddad. You're lying. Oh, yeah. Remember your hen night when I told you about Stella? That was just the tip of the iceberg, girl. <laughs> Don't be so filthy. It's a punchline. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> 
Alright. Supposed to have nipped off to the loo. All oh, right. Oh, he's doing me head in all he's not speaking. Well, tell her you're not gonna stand for it. Phil's a very forceful woman. Yeah, I know. Well, she can't stop you mixing with your mates. I mean, what's between her and Carol, all that? Try telling her that. All been out for a run together then, have you? Yeah. Been a bit of a laugh, actually. Yeah, I used to enjoy a bit of outside exercise myself. Well, why don't you join us? Uh, Terence. Uh, better get back. Look, um, if you're still up for it, why don't you join us tomorrow morning, nine o'clock, at the bridge? Don't like it now, do you? Now you're on the receiving end of the truth. How long did it go on for? That's for me to know. I said how long! You just have to go away and imagine. Could have been days, could have been months. Don't lose any sleep over it, though. After all, it was me and Gavin's business. How could you? Quite easy, really. All that time you kept it a secret from me and you were supposedly my best friend. Mm, funny, that. I don't believe it. What else have you done that I don't know about? Who knows? Like you say, I've got to learn when to keep my mouth shut. To think I asked you to be my bridesmaid. <laughs> Ironic, innit? Well, that's it now. You do know that, don't you? I never, ever want to have anything to do with you again. No? Well, snap. I hate you. Well, if you think you're going to have the last laugh, you've got another thing coming. Because I think it's about time the Home Office found out all about Trisha Fisher and her AWOL husband. Oh, you dare. Well, you just try and stop me. You're not the only one who can go out of their way to ruin lives. We weren't friends when I went with Gavin. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it, Bernice. It's no good trying to backpedal now, Trisha. You've made your bed, you're going to have to lie on it. Please, Bernice. I was different then. Different? You've always been the same. A vicious, contemptible troublemaker! If you've been affected by Bernice and Ashley's story, you can visit itv.com forward slash advice for support information.